It's offering time. Many years ago, <clears throat> oh, I mean, well, at the, back in the very beginning days, when the Lord was teaching me after uh, much training, well, every time I mention my spiritual dad, Moral Roberts, I, <laughs> you know, I miss him. I miss Brother Hagin. I miss T.L. Osborne and, and those men, those giants of of ambassadors for the kingdom of love. Hallelujah. And this was back at a time, lots of full gospel businessmen's meetings and <clears throat> churches and so forth. And there were people that had funny ways of receiving offerings. Some didn't receive it all. And and I said, Lord, uh, I, I, I'm uncomfortable. In fact, I just plain don't like religious cons. And I knew a few. And um, well, I won't get into all that. It, I don't want to get upset before I even talk, start this. <laughs> I didn't know them. I knew who they were and I had witnessed their stuff and uh, trying every way they could to get somebody to give them anything. And I saw, I said, what do I do? It was very plain. He said, since I'm holding you responsible for he heaven's e economy and heavenly laws of prosperity, then during the offering time, you take a few moments, a few minutes. It may and from time to time turn into the evening service or the morning service. And I've, I've had that happen and teach concerning offerings, givings, and heavenly economics and the way God looks at the, the, the money of the church. Well, we know he's interested because he sat right there by the treasure and looked what everybody put in there. And the little widow that put in everything she had, gave the largest offering in the house. So it is important to know what the Bible has to say about it, because this, I've forgotten exactly what the numbers are, but there are something like five, 600 verses in here concerning prayer. And there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 2000 verses concerning money. How to handle it and how not to handle it, what to do with it and what not to do with it. Who should have it, who shouldn't, who does and why they do and why they don't. And we found out that poverty death and sickness is under the curse. That's right. That's right. Prosperity, healing yes. and life yes. is under the blessing. Yes. And it's like Charles Capp said, that is so simple. You have to have help to misunderstand it. <laughs> That's right. Turn with me, please to Luke chapter eight. <clears throat> Verse one, Father, we thank you tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. 
It is the blessing, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Love is not only the gateway, it is the open door to a life without fear for perfected, matured, complete development of love in one's life casts out fear. Because fear has torment and I do not want my people to be tormented. So rejoice in your spirit knowing that I am on the highway to health for the power of my love and the strength and the unfailingness of my love when it is applied in faith brings about a failure-free, fear-free, sickness-free life. A life worth living, even unto old age through completely until death and you depart. And never be afraid again. Never be sick again. <laughs> Glory to God. Never be broken poor again. But alive and well strong, even until the day of departure, saith the Lord. Oh, 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 glory to God. Why? Because he is Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. He's Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It came to pass afterward that he, Jesus, went throughout every city and village preaching. Jesus, a preacher. Do you have any idea how many Christian people don't know that? Now, Gloria and I were scriptural illiterates. I, I told you about that. I mean, I was shocked that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John told the same story. I said, isn't that wonderful? She said, it really is, isn't it? Well, neither one of us had any idea. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Praise God. He's a preacher. He went everywhere preaching, teaching, and healing. And people were taught. I heard Brother Hagin say this in, in the, uh, the early days. Uh, when he became a pastor. They t taught and believed that Jesus healed to prove his divinity. That couldn't possibly be true. Because at Nazareth, Mark 6, Luke 4, at Nazareth, there he could do no mighty work. It said it didn't say he wouldn't. It said he couldn't. He could do no mighty work save he laid his hands on a few sick people or people with minor ailments because of their unbelief. We shall have no unbelief here. <laughs> Amen. He's a preacher showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the 12 were with him. And say, and yes. certain women 
which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Now there's three prominent women here. Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and how many? Many others which ministered unto him of their substance. They were his partners. They ministered unto him of their substance. You know, I enjoy these kind of things. I I call it going widescreen and you see things. When I found out the centurion that built the synagogue in Capernaum, which was Jesus' hometown and headquarters to his ministry, that sent word to Jesus, come heal my servant. Jesus said, I'll come healing. He is so easy. I'll come healing. And the centurion. Now, uh, chap, this would be like a garrison commander. He, he's commander, of, uh, he's the centurion of that whole area. And he, he literally said, no, no, I'm not important enough. No, you you don't even have to come under my roof. They came and said, he's built us a synagogue. But but he said, you know, I tell him to go. He goes, I tell him to come. I tell him to do this. They do it. You speak the word. The command authority of Jesus' word and my servant will be healed. Then, he was the centurion of crucifixion. Now he had accepted him as a prophet. Then he said, this must have been the son of God. And he couldn't get it out of his mind. And he sent for Peter and said, I got to know more. His name is Cornelius. Does that, that evidently doesn't excite you like it does me. (laughs) It's the little stuff. (laughs) Yes. And the fact that Jesus is a preacher, he still is. Chap, this is the reason we get loud. Wait, 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 let's show you. (laughs) And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. I can just see him standing up there. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Others fell on good ground, sprang up, bare fruit a hundredfold, And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He's a preacher. He's my preacher. He's the reason we can preach today. Because he said, it's the Father within me. He does the works. My words are not my own. I only say what I hear him say, and I only do what I see him do. He heard his father shout it, so he shouted it. 
I hear him shout it and I just shout it. Now, all of you, all of us, how many partners at KCM are here? This is a KCM partner meeting. <laughs> well, you understand the principles behind this. I've preached it to you and taught it to you many, many times. They were Jesus partners. Now remember, the ordinance of David at Ziklag. This is very interesting to military people. They came back, everything was gone, everything was burned, and the bad guys had a head start. David inquired of the Lord. I mean, they, they, they wept until they could weep no more. But that's the key. David inquired of the Lord before he did or said anything. And the Lord said, pursue. You will be victorious. Forced march. Now girls, uh, <laughs> those of you that haven't been in the military or really don't know about this, a forced march is when you don't quit. You eat on the way. It's General Patton on the way to Bastogne. Three, what was it? 300 miles when nobody thought he could do something. They just didn't believe he could do it. He didn't believe he could do it. He said, I will do it. I trained these men. They will do it. We will do it. And they did it. These men that David had trained did it. There were a handful, and, and the King James Bible, it just leaves a totally wrong impression by calling Besor a brook. Now, there at home and on television, we, we showed you pictures of it today. It's horrible. There's a bridge that goes over it now. It's a deep canyon and to take cattle down there. Their quartermaster was on feet. I mean, the only thing they had to eat had to walk. But they did it. There it is. See that bridge? Now you get that full of water. You got a real problem here. There it is. That's the brook, a brook. It's a river. It's a torrent. And it was in that kind of condition. It wouldn't have made any difference if it had been completely dry to take cattle down in that canyon, broken their legs and everything else. They came back. I mean, they took care of business. After, go, after marching all that way, they went right into combat and didn't quit till it was over. Got everybody out, everybody's children, everybody's wives, and they came time to divide the spoil, the reward, the harvest. And there was some, uh, well, in military terminology, there was some knotheads in there <laughs> that just didn't get it. They didn't go to the fight. Give them their family. Give them a little food and send them home. Uh -huh. David said, not so, my brother. For it was God 
that gave us that victory. It was God that gave us the victory. And we will divide the spoil equally between those that went to war and those that guarded our quartermaster because our food is as important in this case as our families. They divided alike. That's what I heard in that first partner service that I told you about with my father in the faith, Oral Roberts. Hmm. That all of the people that came into the kingdom of God through his ministry, I had an equal part that I would receive reward. Yes. That Gloria and I, my, our family, yeah. because we're partners. And I'll say it to you again. Which is more important? The preacher or the ones who paid the bills? You can't have one without the other. You can't have this meeting without you being a partner to it. Now, you, you may not be, the Lord may not have told you to be a partner of the Catholic Folk Ministry. And that's between you and the Lord. Only you can make that decision. But you're a partner in this meeting. Amen. You are a partner in this meeting. And of course, I won't know t yet how many people accepted Jesus last night. I really, that just rose up on the inside of me that there would be many, 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 many people. Yes. We've got, a, we have 62 nations watching this. Wow. And I notice on all of our, all of our meetings, I'm, t I'm talking about almost a hundred percent of our meetings, someone in China is there. And so I don't get all that angry and bent out of shape when I see something made in China. I think maybe one of my partners made this pair of socks. Yes, I'll wear them gladly. They are not responsible for the people having the flu. You understand that? <laughs> it's some more knotheads over there. No, I won't. <laughs> so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, sir, to reveal to each one of us. And I say what Jesus said, he that have ears to hear, let him hear what the Lord is saying tonight concerning this offering, concerning this open door, consider this soil, <laughs> consider Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Consider him. Consider the covenants. Consider what he says concerning this offering and these offerings in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for it. We give you the praise and the honor for it. And the glory must go to the mighty name of Jesus.